And Bridget, I'm going to ask you in a second if you can see everything okay. Everything looking good? Everything's looking good. Yeah. It's um it's not in presenter mode just ah, yet. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now we got it, right? Yeah, you got it. Awesome. All right. Thank you everyone for joining us for today's Tech Tuesday. My name is Vanessa. I am a communication specialist with ITS. And with me today, I have my colleague Bridget McFadden, one of our other ITS uh, communication specialists. And we're here to yeah. talk to you about Qualtrics. Um, specifically how to add scoring to your Qualtrics survey. So while this is a session that's mainly geared towards people who are familiar with building surveys and they're just kind of looking for the next step of how to enhance them, um, certainly if you've never used Qualtrics before, welcome. Um, hopefully you can learn a couple things and you know get interested in using the tool. I have a QR code on the screen. So if you have a phone nearby and you just wanna participate, it's not mandatory, you can. Um, there's also a URL at the bottom there. This is going to a quiz that I have put up. It's a five question quiz of general knowledge, um, just so you can see how the scoring works. So if you wanna take a second and just uh, scan that, you can. And while you're scanning it, um, I'll just mention, I'm recording today's session. So if you wanna go back and look at anything later on, maybe you missed something and wanna review it, or even share it with colleagues, um, you know, feel free to go ahead and do that. I'm actually gonna be sending this um, at the end of the, of the day, a link to this video, as well as some links on how to use scoring in Qualtrics. So you can go back and, and look at it and share it with whoever you need to. Um, if you have any questions at any time during the session, please feel free to put them in the chat. Um, I'm gonna be stopping periodically uh, to take any questions that you might have, and Bridget's gonna help me go through them so that I can make sure I don't miss anybody. And uh, without further ado, I'm going to get started. This uh, URL is going to be at the bottom of the slides. If you are just joining us and you still want to take part, feel free. So scoring in Qualtrics, what is it? So it so let, first, let's go through what Qualtrics is. Again, you might be familiar with what it is already if you built a few surveys. But I think it's important to point, point out that I see a lot of people using free survey tools. SurveyMonkey is a really popular one. Uh, that I see a lot of people using at Wild Cornell. And it's it's a good tool, don't get me wrong. But I really recommend that if you haven't ventured into the Qualtrics world yet to really go ahead and give it a try. Um, because we have an enterprise license, we get access to a lot of robust features that a free SurveyMonkey account isn't gonna offer you. There's a ton of question types that you can take advantage of to have really um, really just customizable surveys to get that data that you need for whatever it is you're, you, um, you need to do. Um, another thing I really like about Qualtrics is that you can reuse almost every piece of your survey. So if you have something that you need to send out monthly, quarterly, you don't always have to reinvent the wheel. Qualtrics lets you kind of rehash things as needed so that, you know, you don't have to always build things from scratch. And the best part really is that this is no additional cost to your department. You don't even have to make a special request to access Qualtrics. Literally, you can just go to wildcornell.qualtrics.com. I'll put that in a follow-up email to you so you have access to it. Um, and you have access. Just sign in with your Wild Cornell credentials and you're all good to start making surveys. So what is scoring in Qualtrics? Really at its most basic, it's just signing, assigning a numerical value to the answers that you have in your survey. And you may wanna do this for a lot of reasons. Um, if you're a facilitator, for example, or a professor, and you have a course where you need to do knowledge checks or quizzes, um, you know, adding scoring to your survey makes perfect sense. There's also things like self-assessments. Uh, I'm going to do an example later where I helped a department put together a survey that assessed people for burnout on the job. So they use scoring as a way where people could see what score they got at the end and determine, are they perhaps suffering from burnout on the job? And of course, there's things like satisfaction surveys. You know, if you're, uh, you know, have a, a clinic and you want to see if people, you know, were happy with their service on a scale of one to five, for example, that's another way that you can use that function in Qualtrics. 
but not every question type allows for scoring. So I've highlighted on the left image uh, which questions do allow for it. So multiple choice, even text entry allows for scoring. And, and there are some tricks to that that I'll show you later in the demonstration. Um, but things like uh, matrix tables, sliders, side-by-side -side, and net promoter score, those are the, the question types that will allow you to do scoring. So for example, at the very top, you have descriptive text. I mean, there's really not a way to score just, you know, something that's describing what your survey is about. And if you look at the specialty questions like hotspot and heat map, those are image-based questions where you click on them and kind of see later on in the results where people clicked on an image. That's very hard to quantify. So of course, you know, scoring may not make sense for that. So when you are putting together your surveys, just keep in mind that not every question that you have on your survey may be eligible for a score. So without further ado, I'm just going to go into the demo. Bridget, are there any questions? I noticed there's, there's a couple of uh, notifications in the chat. Um, a, oh, just a couple comments on um, the screen was showing the QR code and hiding other slides, but I think that's okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. All righty. So let me go into the survey that I created that was in the QR code. We'll go through it together. So this is a preview of the survey I put together. And again, if you want to access Qualtrics, it's wildcornell.qualtrics.com. So really quick in the chat, people with xanthophobia fear from these options, what do you think the answer is? Just throw it in the chat. What do you guys think? Any guesses? Everybody's being shy. All right, we get a few people saying yellow. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. It is uh, the fear of the color yellow. Um, I believe there is a, in a dermatological condition called xanthoderma, which is like a discoloration of skin that's yellow or orange. So we'll get that one. Um, what is the highest grossing movie of all time, but adjusted for inflation? What do you guys think it is? I see Gone from Michele. I see Titanic, Cynthia. Any other guesses? Star Wars. Okay, so we've got a few answers here. So I actually thought at one point that it was Titanic, but it is actually when you adjust it for inflation, Gone with the Wind still. like, And that movie came out in 1939, so that's uh, pretty interesting. Um, a group of peacocks. So this is a collective noun. So what do you call a group of peacocks? Any guesses? Scary. <laughs> Cynthia, I also agree. Birds of that size together are scary. I've got huddle, ostentation, a couple of, uh, of responses for ostentation. So it is actually an ostentation. I get, I get a few people who always guess Congress, but I believe that's actually a group of salamanders and even ravens. Um, so there we go. Um, the smallest country in the world by landmass, I should have uh, uh, specified. Um, Michele Fortes says the Vatican City, uh, and he is correct. It is, uh, Vatican City is 0.2 square miles. If you want any type of comparison, um, Manhattan is, I believe, about 23 square miles. So it's very teeny tiny, Vatican City. And how many, approximately how many lights were used to decorate the 2016 Rockefeller Center Christmas tree? I got 50,000 from Diane, another 50K guess. Uh, somebody guessed 80, although that is not on the quiz, but that's okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll round it up to 100. <laughs> Any other guesses? A lot of people guessing 50,000. They might have taken the quiz, but it is 50,000, which is surprising to me because it seems like it's a lot more. I would have guessed 100,000. So here is our survey. I have answered all the questions. And when I move on to the next screen, um, I see this a little tabulation showing me that I have all the answers correct. And these are the points I got one out of one. I have a hundred percent. 
And right here at the very top where it says you answered five out of five correctly, that's something that I manually included in Qualtrics um, that, that I'm going to teach you how to do in case you want to be a little more specific in creating scales and things like that in your own surveys. So let me click out of that. And we're going to go back into my surveys and see how I did this. So let me go into another version of the same survey. And this version of the survey has no scores, okay? So let's find out how to get to scoring. So right now, if you look at the left-hand side of the screen, you're gonna see a few icons and I'm hovering over one that's called survey options. It looks kind of like a little switchboard. And when I click on it, uh, there's lots of options here on the left-hand side, but I'm gonna look for the one that's called scoring. And this changes my dashboard just a tiny bit. And you can see that now I have all my questions and I've got some answers here. And they're a little kind of a little number pound symbols where I'm supposed to put in a value. So as far as scoring goes in Qualtrics, you can add any integer, whether it's positive or negative, and you can add decimal points for a score. So in this case, I want to do really simple scoring, and I'm going to go to the correct answer right here. And as soon as I click on it, you'll see that it adds a one just by default, but I can change that to anything I want. If I click outside of it really quick, you'll notice that Qualtrics turns this option green. So anytime I put a positive value, it turns green, as in it's going to add to the person's score. And I can, again, I can make this 10, I can make this 10.5. I can make it, you know, 20, whatever number makes sense for what you're doing in your survey, go ahead and put it there. Um, if I wanted to be perhaps a little punitive and maybe give somebody um, minus points for putting in a wrong answer, I could also do that. So let's say somebody put razors in and that's not the right answer. I could do negative one. And if I click outside of that, you'll notice that Qualtrics turns it red, meaning that it's going to take away from the person's total score at the end. All right. Um, you know, if I want to get rid of them, I can. I can just delete them. Or there, if I, you know, put a number here, I can always hit clear at the top here to erase all of the scoring and kind of start from scratch. Um, one thing you'll notice is that this button changes quite frequently. Right now it says auto. Um, if you are putting together a survey where there's a scale, um, you can click auto and it actually just puts one, two, three, four, five to, down to however many you know answers you have. This can be really useful with things like a matrix question where you've got a matrix table that has a bunch of values in numerical order from left to right. Um, that just makes it go a lot faster. But of course, you can also just manually put it in there um, for, uh, you know, just the one correct answer. Um, these ones that are blank right now, I'm actually, they're counted as zero. And I'll show you where um, in Qualtrics that, uh, that shows up. So really quickly, I'm just going to give each of my right answers a one and 50,000. Perfect. All right. So I've scored my quiz very easily. Um, let's go back up here to the top. So I've got something called category score and a link here on the left that says scoring options. So I'm going to click on this link here. So right now, category score, um, this is something you don't have to worry about for really simple quizzes where you just have one variable that you're scoring throughout your survey. And I'm going to go through this a little later and show what it's like to have multiple categories that you could score in the same survey. But for now, let's just leave this as it is. We've got one score and it's perfect. Um, you can decide also how you want the scoring results to show up as somebody's taking the survey. So you saw that when I did the test survey, I got a, a tabulation at the end of the survey that showed me exactly how I did. And I can say maybe I want it after each question, even, um, an, uh, you know, a, a quick tabulation of whether I got it right or wrong. Um, I'd say, depending on what you're doing, I would kind of caution doing it after each question. For example, if you're doing some type of assessment and it keeps telling them what the value is as they're going through the survey, 
they may not like the results they're getting and might be discouraged from completing it. So really kind of exercise some caution when you do after each question. It may make sense for what you're doing, but sometimes it's not the best option. Um, and you don't have to pick any of these at all. And you can customize a, you know, an ending message all on your own. So it's really up to you. I'm going to leave it at the end of the survey for right now. And when I talked about the empty values being zero, this is what I mean. So you can treat empty statistics for scoring categories as zero. Um, in, in general, for the types of surveys I do, I usually just leave this as is, but you may be in a situation where you want to change that and uncheck it. So anytime you make changes to your scoring categories, you just want to hit save. All right. And we're going to go back into our survey builder, which takes you back out to your survey. And you can, of course, preview your survey really quickly and see how it goes. So I'm going to give myself a couple of right and wrong answers here. Um, and then 50,000. And this is a question I'll get to in just a second. All right. So now you can see when I get wrong answers, I have little X's showing me why it was that I got it wrong and then what the correct answer was. You can kind of see a pale green going on there showing me what the correct answer was and my total score. So let me go back into the survey. Um, I added a question at the end to remind myself to explain how you can actually add scoring to uh, text entries. So I have a question at the bottom. Who is the person giving this demonstration? That would be me. So let me go back into my survey options and we're gonna go back into scoring. And let me go down to the bottom. So who is the person giving this survey, uh, this demonstration? So that would be me. My name is Vanessa, full name Vanessa Puig. And there are a few ways that I can do this. So um, I can just put my first name. I can do my whole name. Uh, maybe you only remember my last name. That's fine. I'm just trying to figure out the possible ways that you might refer to me in this uh in this survey. And I'm giving a, a point for each of these, depending on how, the, how you answer. So let me go back into my survey builder and let me preview it again really quick. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That was an interesting error. All right, so really quick, I'm just gonna go pick the first ones of each thing just to get to the bottom. And so who is the person giving this survey? So one thing that's important to know about um, text entry uh, scoring is that it's not case sensitive usually. So I'm actually going to put it all in small caps and submit it. And you can see that I actually got the answer right. So I did get a point and there were the other options available for that particular text entry option. So that's how you would score um, a text entry. Uh, and this is this, the most basic form of scoring that you can do in Qualtrics. Let's 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 amp it up a little bit. Uh, but before I get to that, Bridget, are there any questions about this basic type of scoring? I don't see any yet. Okay, perfect. So I'm just going to move on. So this is the example I was telling you about before. This was um, a department had reached out and they wanted to use this survey. This is only a portion of it but they had this massive matrix question and it, it measures three different things, okay? What they're assessing for is burnout in terms of emotional exhaustion, depersonalization, and a sense of personal accomplishment. So they were curious of how can we measure these three things separately, but within the same survey, okay? So let's go back into our scoring again, we're going to go to survey options and we're going to go to scoring. And that's going to take us to our special scoring dashboard. So here's that matrix. You know, it's, it's really big. It's got 22 different items and I only have one category. I have score and I need the three that I just discussed. So let's go into our scoring options, right? And I don't need this one scoring category, okay? I need the three I talked about, emotional exhaustion, depersonalization, and, accompli and personal accomplishment. So I'm gonna hit this gear icon and delete that category entirely. And I'm gonna make three new ones. So let's put them in. 
All right, and when I'm done typing, all I'm doing is clicking out or hitting enter, and that creates my new category. So next one. And last category. Perfect, so I've got my three categories. And for this one in particular, I don't want Qualtrics to do its default scoring at the end of the survey. I wanna do my own because since this is a scale, it's, a per, it's an assessment essentially, I wanna give the person their score and then tell them what it means, all right? And I just can't get that kind of detail in the way Qualtrics does it. So we're gonna do it ourselves together. Um, remember, anytime you make a change, you hit save. So now I'm back in my scoring dashboard. And right here in category, you'll see now that if I click this drop down, I've got all three available. So right now I have to do the scoring for emotional exhaustion. So all I have to do is super easy. I would have to find all of the questions here or all the statements rather that have to do with this category here. And I'm going to be honest, I don't remember them all off the top of my head. I'm sure I could read them, but for the sake of time, I don't want to have to, you know, go through them with a fine tooth comb. So I'm just going to click on them. All right. And in this case, the scale works for me one to seven. That's fine for the sake of this demonstration. Um, and all you have to do is click on the ones that have to do with um, emotional exhaustion. So I'm just kind of, I'm going to kind of Christmas tree it, to be honest, um, and just pick a few. And all the ones that are green are going to be assigned to this category here, okay? Um, when I wanna move on to the next category, all I have to do is hit depersonalization. And you'll see that they have turned back and they've been grayed out, right? I've got a brand new slate to work on. So, um, you know, all I have to do is click the ones that have to do with depersonalization, all right? Um, and then I move on to personal accomplishment. Same thing, everything's been grayed out, all right? And you don't have to click save or anything like that. Qualtrics, um, you know, auto saves your work. So for example, if I went back to emotional exhaustion, all that work that I did is still there. Okay, oops, I zoomed in a little bit. Um, so those are my scores for all of these three different things, right? And when I go back to my survey builder, I could go and preview it and test it, but what I want to fix first is that special scale that I want at the end of my survey, okay? So I'm going to go back to the bottom, oops, and you'll see Qualtrics has kind of changed its interface over time. So now you'll see an end of survey message at the bottom of your survey here. And you can customize this any way you want. The, the message that reads here now, we thank you for your time spent taking the survey. That's the default. Qualtrics always adds that to the bottom of the survey, but you don't have to have that if you don't want to. So I'm gonna click on that and you're gonna see right here um, where it says default, you can do a custom one. And you're gonna go into your library. Right now it says my name, but it would say yours. And oops, you're gonna go to the very bottom and make a new message. So I'm gonna name this, um, I don't know, burnout message. What's today's date? Uh, March 14, 23, because I've done this a few times. So I'm gonna introduce you to the magic of piped text, which is a super useful feature in Qualtrics. Um, all piped text does is it takes content that the survey uh, taker, has submitted in other parts of the survey and kind of moves them or pipes them into other fields that you may put somewhere else. So in this case, I wanna take the score that somebody had for each of these categories and pipe them into this final message that once they hit submit, they're gonna see what their assessment is. So I could, uh, in this case, this message uh, field looks very similar to Word. You know, you've got some fonts, formatting, things like that. Um, I'm going to type a quick message. Thanks for taking our assessment. Um, here are your scores. Okay. And then I can say for, oh, let me make it actually, there we go. If I could spell today, that would be helpful. Um, exhaustion, you scored. I'm going to put a little blank there now. Out. Uh, and this is a totally me guessing. This is a random number I'm pulling out. 
um, you scored blank out of 40, uh, which indicates blah, blah, blah. And this is where I would put probably information about a scale, right? Um, and just for the sake of time, I'm actually just gonna copy paste this and just change our three categories here. And the last one was personal accomplishment. Oop. There we go. All right, so here are my three categories and I wanna pipe in that score right here where these blanks are, all right? So anytime you see this icon right here, which is the letter A with these brackets around it, that means that you can add pipe text somewhere. So I'm gonna highlight this, or rather put my cursor there, and I'm gonna add some pipe text. So you can see there's a lot of different things for pipe text. You can pipe in answers, for example, that people put in other parts of the survey. Um, you can pipe in the date and time, um, numbers, quotas, if you added that to your survey, lots of things. But today, I'm concerned about scoring, so I want to pipe in the score. And you can see when I click on scoring, I've got my three categories there. Perfect. So I'm going to move to emotional exhaustion. And not only can I pipe in the score, but if I wanted to, I could pipe in things like the weighted mean or standard deviation. Like it, it, it's, you know, whatever you want to do. But in this case, it makes sense to just pipe in the, the score for that category. So that's what I'm going to do. And Qualtrics is going to give you this uh, kind of code. And this will actually turn into a physic, like a number, don't worry. But this is just a code that Qualtrics pops in there. So it, it's basically kind of talking with your survey to pull out that number for that category. Um, and I'm going to do it for the rest of these. So again, pipe text, scoring, we've got depersonalization now. I'm going to add that score. And then the last one here, pipe text, scoring, personal accomplishment, and score. Um, you know, because this is very similar to Word, I can do some formatting. So you might want to, you know, consider making some things bold just so they pop out a little more. And for the scores themselves, I may want to make them a specific color just so they, you know, kind of stand out to the person taking the assessment so they can determine, you know, if they have burnout or not and then what they can do about it. So really quickly, let me just do all of these. It'll make it easier for you to see for the demonstration as well if I do this. So perfect. Once I have my, my survey set up with the message, I can just hit save. Okay, and there we go. End of survey message, all ready to go. So let's see what this looks like, right? I'm gonna go into preview to test it out. And again, I'm just gonna pick very randomly just kind of to make any score here um and it's 22 items so i'm going as fast as i can y'all uh do 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 christmas tree this uh, a few more and done perfect okay so let's hit next and see what happens so this is what it looks like so thanks for taking our assessment. Here are your scores for emotional exhaustion. You scored a 17 out of 40. And, you know, you might have more information here about what that means on, uh, you know, for the person taking it. Same thing with depersonalization and personal accomplishment. So these are the scores based on that pipe text that you input into your survey message. So this is a really cool way to kind of customize your scored surveys so that people can have more information for, you know, personal assessments, especially um, how they did. And then you can even add more information about, you know, where they can go for help or, you know, maybe a person they could contact in your office. You know, it's, it's really whatever you need. But I, I really like this customization feature in Qualtrics. I find it to be super useful. Um, so really quick, you've put this survey together and Okay, great. How do you find out what all what everybody's scores are, right? They know, but you need to know too as the person who put it together. So let me go back into the quiz that we took together earlier. So there are a couple of ways that I can find out what the scores were for this particular survey. One is I can get the raw data and just go to data and analysis. 
and download it as like an Excel file or maybe even SPSS. Um, it's just tabulated really quick because I think it's almost 200 responses. So it takes a little minute to think. There we go. So right here, I, I mean, you have this view here with each line item showing how people answered. I personally don't find it to be very useful. Um, so, cause there's only so much it could show on the screen. So I'm gonna export the data and download it. And you can see there's a few options there at the top uh, of how you can download it. I did a CSV file and it's just gonna take a quick second. So I've downloaded it, let it open up. Ooh, that's not the right one, but it will show up in just a second. There we go. So here it is. There's a lot of data here, most of which you might not need, like when somebody started the survey and ended it, things like that. But I'm just gonna scroll here to the very end and usually where you'll see Q1, that's question one. That's where your survey starts. So each of these columns is basically how people answered your survey, all right? And if you've added scoring to your survey, any column that starts with SC is a score. So for this particular line item here, I can see that this person got all five questions right and so on. And you can decide what you want to do with this Excel sheet. I mean, you can put together visualizations in Excel. You can plop this into, you know, um, you know, the BI gateway, um, you know, Power BI, for example, and make visualizations that way. Again, SPSS, if you've got more. Um, if you had multiple categories, like we did for the burnout survey, there would be several columns showing the score for each of those categories, okay? And each of these, again, is a line item of how one person happen to answer, okay? So that's one way to get the results. The other way to get results, let me get that out of the way. The other way to get results is you would go to results. But this view is more of an overall view of how everyone answered. So this is giving me basic visualizations for question one, for example, people with xanthophobia fear. Most people, it seems like, got the color yellow correct. So great, but... If I click on it, I can change the visualizations. I can make it a bar chart, for example. Um, I can, uh, oops, let me put it back on the pie chart. Um, but I can change colors. I can you know, change the legend values. And then if I wanted to, I could share this report with colleagues of how people did. And this is only question one, but if I click down the list, I can see question two and so on. And now there's also a category for score. And I can click on that and find some cool information. I can see the minimum and maximum scale, you know, that we use for the scoring. Um, you know, I can see the mean, the standard deviation, the variance, and the total number of people who took the survey. So this is just a kind of another way to view the same data if you wanted just an overall look at how everybody did. And then just share it from here as a PDF, a Word, PowerPoint. Um, even do a public report, which is just a link that you can send to people and they can view the data in real time. They can't manipulate it in any way. It's just a way for them to see it in a web browser. So that's scoring in a nutshell. Are there any questions of things that I can show uh, show again or any questions you have about uh, you know doing them for your own surveys and use cases? Sure, there are a couple of questions. Um, one is from Pauline. Can you account for spelling errors in a text entry answer? Um, you can. I mean, if you anticipate that there could be spelling er er errors, sorry, certainly you can include those as answers and make them count. Um, obviously, it's very hard to predict exactly which spelling errors you could get, but you could certainly, you know, put in a few options there. Um, and hope for the best, I would say. <laughs> cool. And then one more question from Nathaniel. Um, can you customize the blah, blah to the actual score? Like low score means one thing, high another. Yes. So in that case, I mean, in this, in the demonstration I showed you just for the sake of time, I didn't put too many details, but you know, for that kind of burnout survey, for example, you could, where the blah, blah, blah is, you could include the actual scale. You could say, you know, uh, you know, a, a scale, uh, an answer from one to 10 means that you're not really suffering from emotional exhaustion or that it's unlikely you have emotional exhaustion. But like if you're up to 40, then yeah, you, you probably have emotional exhaustion. That's definitely where you can add those details about what that score means so that um, it provides just 
meaning to the person who's taking your survey. Any other questions or things I can show? I'm not seeing any other questions yet. Okay, well, while we're wrapping up, if you have any, uh, feel free. But again, for anybody who came in late, um, I will be sending out the recording of this session to everyone. So feel free to be on the lookout for later today. Um, you know, I have all of your emails from when you registered, so that's where I'll be sending it. Um, and you can share it with your colleagues here. That's perfectly fine. Um, the more people using Qualtrics, I think the better. Um, and if there are no more questions, I can definitely wrap it up and give you back a couple minutes. Looks like I don't see it. All right, but uh, th oh, thank you to everybody who's uh, who's uh, enjoyed the session. I really hope it helped. And if you have any questions, uh, you know, feel free to just reply to the email that I send out. And um, thanks for attending Tech Tuesday today. Have a good one. Thanks, Vanessa. Thank you, Bridget. <laughs>